our first wood-fired cooking class. I'm very happy to demonstrate for you today how to make an authentic Napolitana pizza. So just like a lot of authentic Italian dishes, the Napolitana pizza has a lot of rules, okay? So if it's gonna be the real deal, it's gotta follow the rules. So these rules are actually from the council of Napolitana pizza, if you can believe it, there is such a thing, okay? So in order for a pizza to be an authentic uh, Neapolitan or Napolitana pizza, it must abide by the following rules, okay? So it must be 35 centimeters in diameter, so an individual size round pizza. Secondly, it has to have the distinctive cornicioni, which is the raised edge. It's about one to two centimeters raised rim around the pizza, okay? And there must not be any char marks on it, okay? And then lastly, it needs to be soft and fragrant like a Neapolitan pizza. Okay, so let's show you how to achieve this at home with a wood-fired oven, or you can try and adapt it to your home oven. Okay, the dough of a Neapolitan-style pizza. It only has a few things in it. Flour, good quality Italian flour, preferably. Um, the majority of it should consist of double zero flour. Um, a lot of uh, pizzaiolas like to add a little bit of a stronger bread flour as well. In our case, I like to add it to the poolish, okay? So flour, mostly double zero, we'll say. Water, uh, and it could be just regular water. I like to use filtered water um, when I make my pizza. Some real diehards prefer to use Italian water, so Italian um, mineral water, bottled mineral water. But uh, for my demonstration here, I'm using filtered water. Then we've got salt. I've got sea salt. It doesn't have to be sea salt. It can just be regular salt. And yeast. So I've got some instant fast rising yeast here. Um, and there's a couple of, there's a number of ways to make dough. I believe that the poolish method is one that really lends to the beautiful uh, Napolitana taste. So I'm going to be sharing two recipes uh, with you, one with the poolish and one without, okay? Uh, so the one with the poolish, it's similar to a sourdough starter, uh, very typical for pizza with a long fermentation. Okay, in order to create an authentic Napolitana style pizza, it has to have the following ingredients on it, which are mostly from the Campania region, which is where Naples is located, okay? So first and foremost, we've got our San Marzano tomatoes of Agro Sarnese Nocciolino DOP. So these are a specific tomato with our little seal on it um, that shows us that this is a DOP product. I'm going to share some more information with you on how to recognize these authentic tomatoes. Okay, um, we do have some optional grated cheese here. You can use Parmesan cheese or Pecorino cheese, and this is optional. Okay, so this is not an absolute must. Okay, we must have either mozzarella di bufala, which is buffalo, fresh mozzarella or fior di latte mozzarella, which is what I have here, okay? So it's in brine, it has a high humidity rate of about 60%, okay? And this is what you will find on an authentic Neapolitan style pizza. Okay, then of course we've got our fresh basil. I just picked this from the garden. We would never ever use dry, okay? Fresh basil leaves. Okay, and then last but not least, we have some extra virgin olive oil, which will be drizzled over the pizza. So those are the ingredients. These are the only ingredients that you'll find on an authentic Napolitana style pizza. 300 grams of bread flour, one eighth of a teaspoon of instant yeast, Three hundred grams of lukewarm water. Stir till it's all incorporated. It will be a wet dough. Now 
make sure it's all incorporated with no dry bits of flour remaining. Cover and let sit at room temperature for 24 hours. And there you have it, a simple pool dish, which will be the start of a wonderful wood-fired pizza crust. Okay, here we are 24 hours later, we've got this beautiful poolish, spongy and wet and exactly what we want, okay? So we're gonna get this ready to add uh, to our mixture to make our dough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 330 grams of water and we're gonna pour it around the edge and that'll just help us remove this from the bowl when we need it. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside just for a minute and bring in our large bowl for our dough. So I have a large bowl with 700 grams of double zero flour. So now we're getting into the specialty Italian flour and I like to use a whisk for this first part. Just it's kind of really good to mix in our dry ingredients. Okay, so to that we are going to add a half a teaspoon of instant yeast and we're gonna mix that up. Then we are going to add 18 grams of salt, regular table salt or sea salt. It's fine, we're gonna mix that in. We'll set the whisk aside and we're gonna make a nice big well in the middle for our poolish and water. So add that in all at once. And see how easily it comes out of the bowl when we add the water like that? Just slides right out. I'm gonna clean off our bowl and there it is. So now we're going to incorporate this with the best tool you have, which is your hand. So it's gonna be a little difficult at first because it's strands, but you can see I'm kind of mixing it, incorporating the flour, Okay, and what we want to do is we want to incorporate this so that there's no dry flour left. You could do the pincer method, which is taking your hand and squeezing it and basically breaking those strands, and that'll help incorporate all the flour. I'm also lifting it from the bottom and folding it over while I'm turning the bowl to incorporate this. It's very, very wet, which is totally normal. This is a high hydration pizza dough. 70% or more is ideal. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean off my fingers so I can incorporate that. And I will continue now to fold it on top of itself just to incorporate Last bit of water and flour. You can see there are no dry bits left whatsoever now. Okay, so once all the flour and water is incorporated and we have a sticky dough, we're going to do a method that is called stretch and fold. Now, this will get um, some activity going into our gluten and will strengthen the gluten. And basically, it, as the name implies, we're stretching and folding. And I'm left-handed, so I'm doing that with my left hand. I'm pulling it, stretching and folding while I'm turning with my right hand, okay? Turning the bowl, so each time it's about four stretch and folds to incorporate the whole um, ball of dough. And you'll see as you work it, you'll be able to stretch it longer. And when I do the little shaking like that, it just helps you stretch out the piece a little bit longer as the gluten. And you can hear in my voice that this is actually some work I'm doing here because we've got quite a bit of uh, ingredients here. We have about a kilo of flour. So I'm continuing to stretch 
and fold. It will get less sticky. The gluten will get stronger. Okay, and we just want to do that for a few minutes. So I've probably done it about eight or nine times, the complete um, sequence. So each sequence would be four times, right, to stretch and fold the entire ball. So, right, one, two, three, and four is one sequence. So you're gonna do that about eight or nine or even 10 times, okay? And you'll notice, like I said, that it'll get stronger. And by pulling on it, you'll get to stretch it out a little bit longer, okay? So now we're gonna let this rest for 15 minutes. We're gonna cover it with a damp cloth and, uh, and we'll see you back here in 15 minutes. Okay, we've let it sit for 15 minutes with our damp tea towel. So we are gonna go in and we're gonna stretch and fold again for at least um, eight total sequences. You're gonna notice that the dough is stronger now. The gluten is stronger. You should be able to stretch it more easily. See how much easier I don't have to do that little wiggle. So, okay, so same idea. So that is one revolution, okay? So we're gonna do that at least five or six more times. Okay, and now we are gonna cover that with our damp cloth and let it go for another 15 minutes. We'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, here we are again, 15 minutes later. And you will notice when you touch your dough that it is, it's getting stronger, it's getting less sticky, okay? Um, this dough that we're making today is just under 70% hydration. And 70% as much as 80% are the best doughs um, for a Napolitano style pizza. Um, we're just under 70%. This is a really good beginner dough to start. You could, as you progress, add more water to make it into a wetter dough. Okay, now 15 minutes later here, we are going to do our stretch and fold for the final time, okay? So again, you'll notice it's gonna feel differently as it's developed more gluten. So we're gonna do the same thing. But I do wanna show you another technique, which is called um, lift and slap. And you could also do that instead of the stretch and fold, but it's a lot, um, it works really well for wetter doughs. So this one, like I said, is just below 70%. So this one is, um, not too bad to manage this way but if you wanted to try a higher hydration then you could try the lift and slap which i'm going to show you in a minute you're going to take out your beautiful ball of dough and you're going to sprinkle a little bit of flour and you're going to put it down and you're gonna go in on the sides and you're gonna pick it and you're gonna slap it, okay? Then you're gonna pick it up and you're gonna slap it. I've got the camera up high so I can't go too high to show you, but if it was wetter, it would be more pliable. Just put this into a nice tight ball and back in our bowl. And this is now going to rest in our bulk fermentation stage for one whole hour, okay? Where it will at least double in size. And then we'll come back and we'll shape our balls. So we'll see you in an hour. Okay, here we are, an hour later, and we've doubled in size. So now we're gonna shape out our balls. This recipe makes eight 200 gram balls, okay? So let's get this dough on the table. We're gonna carefully remove it without deflating it. There we go. We're making eight balls, so let's dust a little bit of flour on it just to help with cutting it. And I've got a bench scraper here. I'm gonna cut it in half to start. Okay, and then each of these halves will be roughly four balls each. 
You can see the bubbles in it. We don't want to deflate those if possible. So we're going to hold it very gently. So we're going to go in half and then half again. I have a scale nearby as well. So we could, in fact, weigh them out if we want them all exactly 200 grams. Okay, so I'm going to just fold the bottoms to make a nice little ball. So there we have it. We have our eight dough balls. I've got a cookie sheet that I've sprinkled some flour on it. So I'm going to arrange these on here with room in between them to expand. Put them equal distance because they will. And then, um, now we're going to have these proof for a minimum of one hour to a maximum overnight in the fridge. So that's the beauty about this recipe. You can do them up in advance and then uh, set them in the fridge. So we're gonna put plastic wrap on them. Get another piece of plastic wrap. Ideally, if you have a container with a lid, you could put these in and seal them up. That's even better. I'm gonna put this on loosely and then I'm gonna go back with another piece of plastic wrap and put that around there tightly, especially if it's going in the fridge for overnight. You don't want these to dry out. Okay, so there you have it. There are our balls and we'll be back to cook these up into some beautiful pizzas. Okay, we're ready to stretch out our dough. So just like everything else, there's some hard and fast rules about shaping a Neapolitan style pizza. So when we divided up the dough, each of the balls, they had to be between 200 and 280 grams in order to make that 35 centimeter disc um, that you must have for a Neapolitan style pizza. So I've got six dough balls that are that size, and then this one is double. And we're gonna use that one to show you another style of pizza that um, will not be Neapolitan style, because of course, because it's double the size, okay? So I have my pan here with my dough ready to go, and then you need quite a lot of flour, okay? So I've got a ball of flour, and I've got my handy little putty scraper, okay? So this you can just get in the hardware store. It's not a fancy cooking tool. It's actually a putty scraper. Okay, so um, very important. You have lots of flour so the dough doesn't stick. This dough is a high hydration dough, which is um, why it's so light and airy, okay? But it can be a little bit more difficult to work with because of the high hydration. You could even go higher hydration for this, but this is kind of the minimum uh, for a new uh, pizza maker, okay? So you want your tool and you want some flour. So just to remove this, I'm gonna sprinkle some flour right around the edge, okay? And that is now where I'm gonna place my instrument to pull this out, okay? so. The flour will just assist so that I can lift this out without pulling it or deflating any of the air holes, which is what we want. Okay, you can see some nice big bubbles here. Okay, so we don't want to deflate those. So here we are, we have a beautiful dough ball. I'm just going to turn this right into the flour. Okay, so we're going to carefully now turn it over and cover it in flour and then go to the table. Okay, that's very important. You can see that I'm handling this very delicately, very lightly, and that's so it's not deflated. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to deflate the middle and produce our cornicioni, which is that little raised rim that I described to you. And how you do that is we're just basically pushing the air to the outer edge, and that is what is going to help us create that distinctive cornicioni, okay? Now, you're gonna need lots of flour, so we're gonna keep adding flour. Another thing you can do is you can lift, and you can just gently, so I'm gently holding the edge while I'm turning it, okay? So I'm not deflating my cornicioni, and I'm letting, um, basically, gravity kind of help pull my dough, okay? There's another way to do it. Um, when you watch seasoned pizzaiolas do it, they have a little method of basically kind of folding and slapping 
and directing the dough. That's a little bit more advanced. I find if you let gravity help you, you can spin it around and you will have your beautiful cornicioni. Okay, and we want to stretch this out to about 35 centimeters. You may have to go back in. Okay, so we've got our disc of dough ready to dress. So I've got our San Marzano tomatoes here and I like to put them through a fine strainer for at least 30 minutes, okay, to remove some of this liquid. We want a nice concentrated tomato topping. We don't want the water to soak through in the crust, okay? So this has now been sitting. I'm gonna dump it into our bowl and I'm gonna hand crush that. Okay, so we want it kind of nice and thick. San Marzano tomatoes naturally have a bit of salt in them because they're grown so close to the seaside, so the air and the soil and the water naturally have a higher salt content than what we do here in North America. So there's no need to add any extra salt to this. So there you have it. Okay, so we're going to take our beautiful tomatoes. and add them to our pizza. We're gonna leave a little ring around the edge where the cornicione is, okay? The cheese, the grated cheese is optional, but if you wanna add it, that's where it goes. And then next, our fior di latte. So typically the fior di latte is cut into strips or ripped into strips. If we were using buffalo mozzarella or mozzarella di bufala, then that would be cut in rings. So they even have a way of distinguishing what type of cheese is on the pizza. Okay, so we're just going to rip little strips, keeping in mind that this has a really high moisture content, so we're just going to pool a little bit. So you don't want to overdo it with the cheese. You want to add just the right amount. We're going to finish with a little bit of olive oil. And fresh basil is our last ingredient. Some pizza makers like to add it here, but I find it gets a little bit dark. Then there's those of us from the other school of thought where we like to add the fresh uh, basil leaves when we take it out and the heat will have it um, just basically wilt on the pizza. So that's how I like to do it. So I'm gonna move this out of our way because we are going to now put this on our pizza peel. Okay, so how do we get the pizza from here to the peel and in the oven? So remember this little tool I told you about? This is a wonderful tool and it's gonna come in handy here again. If you think it's gonna stick or if you know it's gonna stick, what you can do is you can add a little bit of flour around the outside and using your little tool here, it's just kind of slide some of the flour under there, okay? And that'll facilitate getting it onto your peel, okay? So you wanna do it in one quick motion Okay, so here we go. And then you're going to slide it in and adjust it. You'll always see the pizzaiolos do that. They'll slide it onto the peel and then they adjust it to the round shape very carefully. And then off to the oven we go. about those of you that don't have a wood-fired oven in your backyard. You can get pretty good results at home in your home oven with a pizza stone, okay? But the trick with the pizza stone is you want to put your cold stone in the oven and preheat your oven to the highest temperature it'll go. 
Uh, most home ovens will go to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or even 550 degrees Fahrenheit or even, even higher, okay? So mine goes up to 550. So I would place the cold stone in the oven, turn the temperature up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit and let it heat up for about a whole half hour, a whole 30 minutes um, so that the stone gets really good and hot. Now you are not gonna remove this stone from the oven uh, because it'll be too hot. So you will need a pizza peel, um, just a regular style pizza peel in order to safely deliver the pizza to the stone without burning yourself, okay? If you're really new at this, you may wish to put your dough on a piece of parchment paper and put the parchment paper on top of the peel to slide the pizza into the oven. It takes a little bit of practice to do without the without the parchment paper, but that's where um, any new pizza yolas will start, okay? So if you're doing this in your home oven, you'll see that I put the dough right on parchment paper, and that's for all the new people out there that are worried it's not gonna slide off. Um, this is a good starting point. So all I'm gonna do is open my oven door, there's my stone. It's been in there for about a half hour at 550 degrees. I'm just gonna slide it off and close the oven door and it should be ready in, not quite as quickly as a wood-fired oven, but maybe between five and 10 minutes, depending on how hot your oven got and your quality of your stone. So just keep an eye on it, okay? Okay, here you go. Between three and four minutes and it's ready. So you're gonna use your peel to slide it out very carefully. And there you have it, a Neapolitan pizza in your home oven. Okay, so here we are with some of the beautiful pizzas that we made today. Um, I hope, really hope this inspires you to, um, you know, learn the art of Napolitana pizza. So let's just have a cut, or rather let's just cut one here and I wanna show you. So we've got our nice airy cornicioni on the top, on the side that we talked about. But another distinctive thing about a Neapolitan style pizza is it should be soft enough to fold. And often what the Italians will do is they'll tuck in the end and fold the two sides so that they can eat it. So there you go, I'm gonna have a taste. Mmm, delicious. I feel like I'm in Italy. <laughs> So the only last question is, is will I have beer with this or will I enjoy some beautiful Italian wine? Ciao for now.